Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to another video. So recently we built the interactive one gigahertz retro gamer and we ended up with a modern case, an AMD Athlon, a KT600 chipset motherboard, 512 mega RAM, a power VR Cairo 2 graphics card, 120 gigabyte SSD and a Sound Blaster ODG2 ZS. And to sweeten the deal, you guys wanted me to use Windows Millennium Edition for my very first time. The game in the background is Evolva running on this PC. I've got no idea what to do, so I'm just running around. Now I've got some awesome comments in this build, a lot of you were really looking forward to it and calling it an underdog PC, but some of you called it an abomination and others thought it was the troll PC and that it's likely uh, not even going to turn on. But in the end, this is the PC that the majority of you guys wanted to see, so let's run some benchmarks and see what this 1GHz retro gamer can do. So first up we have some 3 Mark results, 3 Mark 99 Max, we're getting 8,544 and in 3D Mark 2000, 5,600. Incoming max is out at 1024 by 768 and we're getting 109 FPS. Expendable supports all the resolutions at 1024 by 768 we're getting 108 FPS at 1280 by 1024, 89 and at 1600 by 1200 we're still getting 62 FPS. In Draken at 1024 by 768, 82 FPS. At 1280 by 1024, 60 FPS. And 1600 by 1200, we're getting 43 FPS. GL Quake runs along at 116 FPS at 1024 by 768, 74 FPS at 1280 by 1024, and 46 FPS at 1600 by 1200. Surprisingly, Quake 2 runs better than GL Quake. We're getting 133 FPS at 1024 by 768. 93 at 1280 by 960 and 60 fps at 1600 by 1200. Quake 3 is a little bit more demanding, 98 fps at 1024 by 768, 64 fps at 1280 by 1024 and 44 fps at 1600 by 1200. And we've got Serious Sam, this is the most demanding game, we're getting 47 fps at 1024 by 768, 46 fps at 1280 by 1024 and 36 fps at 1600 by 1200. So there seems to be more a CPU limitation happening in this game or the lack of uh, transform and lighting engine holding things back at the 1024 by 768 resolution. So looking at the results, this is some really solid performance. I also want to point out that I had no issues. All the benchmarks completed without any crashes or without any uh, game issues like graphics corruptions and also all the resolutions were supported. Now even ATI and Nvidia have issues with that. For example, the ATI cards struggle with the 1280x960 resolution. Uh, it usually runs in windowed mode and Nvidia sometimes also doesn't work with certain resolutions in certain games. Now gaming at 1024 by 768 is really excellent. We're getting good performance and in many games 100 FPS or even more. At 1280 by 1024 we're still getting good performance and all games apart from Serious Sam we're getting 60 FPS or more which is fantastic. Now 1600 by 1200 that's a little bit too demanding for most games. However in Quake 2 and in Expendable we are getting 60 plus FPS even at that high resolution. Now let's have a look at storage performance. We're using a Promise SATA 150TX4 PCI SATA controller and a 120GB SSD. Now the performance is fantastic just using the machine. It's very responsive, it boots uh, fairly fast and it's got good performance with small files so copying things around happens very quickly. No access time on an SSD, that, that's really what gives us the speed. In terms of uh, performance, we're getting a higher performance while writing. That seems to be just uh, how this controller operates. So we're getting write speeds of up to 80 to 90 megabytes per second and a read speeds of around 50 to 80 megabytes per second. So I must say that the performance of the storage solution of this machine is definitely a highlight and uh, using using it, booting, running games, uh, it's it's beautiful. It works really snappy. And also let's have a quick look at power draw and here I was actually quite surprised. At idle we're getting 89 watts, in Quake 2 1600 by 1200 it pulls 101 watts and in expandable 103 watts. Now this is the power draw at the power supply unit. Now uh, when we built the machine I pointed out that the Athlon is uh, quite power hungry 
and that you have to check with the power supply. Now the power supply I'm using has a 100 watt rating on the 5 and 3.3 volt rail. So this is getting close to the limit and I'm, I'm really pushing it and having a look at the voltage readings. Um, if I, You can tell if a power supply struggles if the 12 volt uh, reading goes up and the 5 volt reading goes down and that's what we can see here I'll put a picture um, in the screen so you you can see what I'm talking about so um, definitely I might have to revisit this and, and use a different power supply I've got a video planned where I'm gonna uh, do a few improvements on this build um, just little things I picked up while using it so that's something to look forward to and that's it for this video guys. So this was short and sweet and I wanted to focus on the benchmarks to get it out of the way because the next video will be all about the games and I've got ton of gameplay footage, uh, a lot of brand new games that I've never used on the channel with the Freps counter running and that will give us a good idea of what this machine is actually capable of doing. So as always guys, if you haven't subscribed, please do so, share the video, like or dislike, leave me some comments down below and I'll see you soon with the next video.